Welcome to Team Meeting and Stats Day. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> there we go, May 2021. I hope you're ready for this. The home sold last May, do you think it was more or less? This May or last May? More less. or less? I'm gonna say less. We got some guesses. Less? Yes. Less transactions. Less people had homes that sold and closed in Bonneville, Jefferson, and Bingham counties. 242 last year, 206 this year. A decrease. Does that mean there's less activity in the market, less buyers? No. No? No? Are we feeling less buyers right now? Mm -mm. No. I've always felt like there was going to be a time when the market says we won't take it anymore. We just won't take it anymore. Yep. We won't pay more. We won't do it. And I think, I don't know if that is what it is, but there will be a time when there's, there has to be a peak. The buyers have a meeting over here at the green belt and they yeah. say, okay, enough is enough. Yeah. We're not going to pay any more. <laughs> but here's an interesting thing to think of. If we go back there. I wonder how many more homes that were a new construction home sold in May mm -hmm. this year versus last year. That'd be interesting. Yep. And when markets are good, people try to sell it on their own. So I wonder how many of those were homes that were sold. I wonder if we're really down yeah. as mm -hmm. we as it looks. Definitely not. Building is catching up. Yeah. But how many years are we behind on new builds? We're still three, four years behind. Anybody that closed this month has been waiting for a year to get that house anyway. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So here's the average price range. You can see that uh, the big numbers right there in the middle, 200 to 400, there's just a ton of homes in that range. So I want to point out, notice the count, the count of 500 and below and 500 above, because let's compare that to the inventory, which is bananas. Year to date market, not quite as down, right? The May stats from last year, we, we were about 15%, but year to date, we're not quite that high. So we are seeing a decrease overall, but not as much. So about a 5% decrease. So overall, we are feeling a squeeze right now with less homes available and tons more people that want those houses. So that compression is happening. But I think as we see the year go by, we'll probably have more and we won't see a 15% decrease, but we probably will be seeing still that tight average. This is what's crazy. That is insane. <laughs> Last year, if you were buying mid-range, you're at 260. This year, you're at 360. First time home buyer, you're probably in that 220 to 250 range. Yeah. It is so tight. So Yahoo Finance, I don't know if you guys saw this article, but when an article came out, it was just on my feed and it said 10 markets that you won't be able to afford a home in in 10 years. And I was like, Please don't be on there. Yeah, I was like, please don't be on there. <laughs> and as I'm going through, I see Arizona. I see a home in or Ogden, Utah's on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And number eight on the list is Idle Falls. Ah! Ah! Serenity now! So, it's so good and so bad. And yeah. It's just it's troubling. Yeah. yeah. So well, in, not really, because that just indicates right now is the time to buy. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Right now is the time there to buy. Is. There it is. It is Amen. true. Amen. That's good. That is great. And yeah. sell. And sell. Yeah, if you own real estate in Idle Falls right now, it's just that what that's saying is in 10 years, you're going to be able to make a lot of money on your real estate. Yeah. So if you do buy. Excellent point. Yeah. Now we want to mention at the same time, in 10 years, we don't know what home interest rates are going to be. We've seen a lot in this past year, a lot of prices of a lot of stuff have gone up. Yeah. So if interest rates, we're going to talk about that a little bit probably later, if interest rates rise, Right now, this is still affordable because of interest rates. Those interest rates change. Your sell high, buy high is your situation. Yeah. We are sell high, buy low right now. Yep. Yeah, buy and low. We're it is it's a it's a sell price on the rate for sure. But it's three sixty one is our average this year, which is a thirty eight percent increase in that just the month of May. So let's go year to date. Do you think it's still that high, or do you think it's a little less? Hopefully less. Just a tiny bit less, but not, not even much. Merit much. Seems like a few months ago we were looking at uh, 14, thinking, well, that's Yeah, a, that right? Is we were like, 14. That's unsustainable. That is, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, going back real quick on yeah. that last slide. So last month the at our realtor luncheon, our association luncheon, the 
the president of the Idaho Eastern Idaho Home Builders Association spoke, and he mentioned that right now in this market, for the first time ever, it's actually cheaper to build than it is to buy existing. Wow. The existing homes have surpassed the cost. So right now you're seeing builders that are raising their prices to meet the market, whereas before it's always been the cost of construction has always caused our prices. So that's so, very interesting. Are there, I, I imagine and that's you guys. Wood going up, right. concrete. Yeah. It's still cheaper to build, he said. But what's interesting. Maybe that was a sales pitch by a contractor. Is every buyer, did you, do you guys hear sometimes where your buyers are like, uh, I think I'm just going to build after they look around? What happens? Do they go build? No. What happens? Not, no. Usually most of the time. Why don't they build? Because they're about a year, year and a half out before you even get into that new build. Yeah. So. so you can't build now. Well, and not only that, but um, I actually have a deal under contract and I got a call from the builder the other day saying that they can't guarantee a close date and we're a year out, yeah. but they have no idea what. So they're like, we need an addendum. And I'm like, well, I can't do an addendum if we don't have a close date. So it just, and it's all because of pricing and marketing and as far as what they're, you know, the lumber and everything else, they actually got pushed back because concrete went up and they can't get curbing and gutters in yet. So, wow. So now I also mentioned if you are going to buy from a builder, if you're not going to do a complete custom build where it's cost plus, those builders are not going to give those savings back to the buyers. So if you think, oh, oh, I should go buy a new build because it's cheaper. The builders just now can meet market price which means they get to pot, make a little bit money, but also their costs are so volatile. So you're not gonna see cost of construction or new yeah. builds go down in yeah. price. It's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's some good margins in there construction is. right now. And you maybe start at 350, but as the cost plus, the cost goes up, you may end up 450. Yeah. It's, yeah. It is, it's yeah. risky. So buying existing, at least you know what you're getting. 34% increase. And you can get it now. And you can get it now, which, Leads us to this one. You list your house at two hundred thousand. You can expect two hundred and five thousand, right? Two and a half percent more than you listed it at. Because last year we were just getting right at the, at the asking price. Um, that's the May, but year to date we're at three percent. So it's getting even tighter. Where we're having to put offers in over asking prices. We're competing for offers. This year you can expect to pay way over what they're asking if you want to compete with the other buyers. Well, and to pivot just a little bit, I'm going to give a plug to my colleague that's right next to me that this is the average is 102.5. But Brian, what do you typically get? <laughs> Man, last time we looked, what well, was 106%, right? Uh, but So, I mean, that alone covers everything you need. So I want to kind commission. of talk about, Brian, with you on explaining why this is. How is it possible that it's always overpriced? Are we, are we underpricing the homes? Or how do you, when you price a home, why is it that you end up getting over? Well, a lot of it, I mean, I shouldn't have to say it, but marketing is huge, right? I mean, if, if we can get exposure, because we know 44% of the buyers are from in-state, which means 56% are from out-of-state. And if we can get more people from out-of-state looking and they say, hey, I've got cash in hand, easy peasy, right? I mean, that's the ticket to success. We, I mean, we cause and we inspire more offers. We create a lot of excitement. And ultimately, if we can bring more offers, that means I get to do my job, which I love, and go negotiate <laughs> and bring people and say, hey, well, we'll do this, we'll do that. Bring the highest offer, bring the best offer. And that's that's what drives the price up. But don't you even, don't you just need one good one? Yeah. Why I mean, do you need a whole bunch? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, if you take the first good offer that comes in, easy peasy. Yeah, that's 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 great. But what's better than one offer? two offers, right? Or three or 10 or 20. So the more offers that we can bring, it just gives us more leverage to bump your price up. Yeah. Well, and as, as a buyer's agent, we are um, finding out how many offers are on the house and figuring out what our offer is going to be based upon the magnitude of the competition. So anyway, just... And and you, had a, you have a pretty good process, Abby, where you take the sold comparables, the past history and the currents. And then how do you, how do you dictate what your offer is going to be percentage wise? Cause you kind of take the future appreciation almost into, into right. play. So I, I do the, the comps 
and then add an additional 7% onto whatever the computer is spitting out. And the reason why is because within a matter of, you know, by the time the house closes in four weeks, six weeks, we're going to have additional comps that will support the higher price. And so I've found that 7% tends to be spot on. So one thing, one thing too, that I think is important for us to, and I don't think many people understand this, is when we are listing a property, when we're making an offer on a property, all we're trying to do is anticipate what the market will do. There is, nobody knows what a home is gonna sell for. We can look at past history and try to guess, you know, make our best educated guess on what that will be, but the market will always prove that right. Um, there might be a home that we think we're gonna get 10 offers and we just get one or two. There might be a home that we think we might be a little high on. Well, the market says, no, we like this and you're gonna get more activity than you think. And so the market always wins. We have to remember that the market really is the player and we just are trying to play with the market. We're, because we're we, the crystal ball readers. Crystal ball readers, yeah. yeah we, it's good. Well, we yeah. always, when you have multiple offers, you get a chance to take um, and go to the best buyer to get the best offer. When you don't have enough multiple offers, you have to take the best offer if there's not very many buyers. But if there's five or 10 buyers, which is the best buyer and can I get them to make the best offer? That's where a really strong listing agent comes in. Well, then you can take not only the best offer, then you can leverage it with you know the highest price and leverage it with the best terms. And you can melt that into one and make it the best. Yeah, the more, the more offers too, the better the terms that you can ask for and which lowers the termination uh, chance, right? And there's nothing worse than being three weeks in to your deal and a week before closing and you're trying to close on your new house and it terminates. And that's what the big deal is about leveraging for, it's not just price, better terms is a really big deal. Big so. deal, yep. Great, so how quickly are homes selling? We know they're getting top dollar. Last year, 23 days, this year we're at 16 days. Same volume of water, just a really tight space. The waves are getting bigger. Year to date, uh, average days, oh, there you go, 25 year to date. That was just May, which is 38% decrease. So when you say what's tighter mean, it means that the, we're being compressed into a shorter time frame where buyers have to make a decision much more quickly than they had to in the past, or they're gonna lose out on the opportunity on that house. As many homes are selling, they're just gonna lose the opportunity because they're gone quicker. Well. Um, Sorry, you bet. We can go back. Um, so with this number, um, it can be a little deceiving because buyers that are active in the market, they're like, no, wait, that they're going in two, three days. Well, yes, the vast majority are going in two to three days. When you see that that number of 25, that also accounts for what is it like 25% of homes that go off the market, come back on. And so that's accounting for that number as well. So great. That's All right, a Chad, let's perfect talk about segue that. into our next slide, actually. But Brian, you were going to mention something as well? No, I was pointing to... Oh, you're pointing at Abby. Okay, <laughs> pick Abby, All pick right. Abby. So a perfect segue because, you know, especially even going back here to the 16 days on the market, can it be, will we ever, is it possible to have three days on the market? I mean, I don't know how we can go much lower because... In order to do that, you have to have 100% of your properties being priced right and selling quickly. And I just don't know if it's possible, but I mean, I don't know, we'll see if it gets tighter than this. But uh, this is the reason why in this next slide, oops, there we go. Okay, so in the month of May, 298 homes came on the market. Only 20 of those homes that came on the market in May actually sold in the same month. Okay, which isn't surprising. We know that most of the homes that do come on the market, it's usually a 30 day close. And so that's in that. But then 213 homes went pending in the month of May. But here goes back to Abby's point. 71% of the homes that were pending were listed in the same month. So 71 of the homes that go on the market are selling within two to three days, which is probably closer to our real reflection of what the market really is, is two to five days of days on market, but this 29% of homes is what's taken us out to 16. Because there are homes, you know, they say, hey, I'm not super motivated. I want price. 
Let's see if we can go a little high and see if we can make something work. We are seeing some price drops now. You know, when you look at properties, we weren't seeing that as much, but I think, are we seeing more price drops now than mm -hmm. we did before? Yes. And that's just a reflection of people trying to play the market, but you can't play the market. You know, you can't trick the market. I mean, the market, it just won't respond. I mean, you'll, the market, what Jeremy and I learned in a downturn of a market is you respect the market and the market will always win. It doesn't <laughs> care what we think. You can't trick the market. I mean, the market's going to do its thing. We just have to predict it and try to ride the waves. Well, in, in this, when we look at that 71%, when we talk about a tightening of the market, we have to realize that 71%, that means homes are coming on and going off, coming on and going off. The water is there, right? It mm -hmm. is there to do. It's coming on, going off, coming on, going off, not sitting around. So it, it, with the right strategy, you can actually buy a house. You can make that happen. There were 213 homes, 298 homes. It, it happens. It's just faster. So you just got to be kind of a little more prepared for that. Right. No. So this next stat is actually great as well. One that we were hoping it would be like this last month because it was going the wrong direction. Our current inventory levels kept going down and down. But guess what? Right now, 138 homes on the market. What? Between Bingham, <gasps> Bonneville, and it's Jefferson like a County. Sword. <laughs> So the 45 percent increase the absorption rate went up because it was under two weeks right yeah so then when we have more inventory then we have all of our other stats start like it's like the pressure eased a little bit mm -hmm. on our market and uh but then again a lot of those homes that are on the market went in over market price you know and so now we're seeing them drop the price we're like oh because it's not a magic market it's an awesome market but it's not a magic market well this will also reflect we had the number of home sales go down because that absorption rate is saying if we didn't have any more homes come on the market right now and we and, and we just took the average of how many sell when would we be out so when we have less houses sell and more on the market that absorption rate increases yeah kind of look at it as like an emergency fund like we now have three weeks worth of savings <laughs> if we lost our job. We could make it three weeks. Whereas before it was just days, like I am broke. Like there is no money. And it's better if you have three months or four months reserves. Be really nice to okay. have some reserves. That is a good so, way to look at it. Anyway, okay, the inventory, current inventory of what we have out there right now, as you can see, use the pointer here. So below 200,000 very slim higher though than it was last month and we can kind of see though look what's kind of evening out in these price ranges we're still seeing between 200 and 400 the largest numbers of homes that are on the market but we're kind of starting to even out to where a million dollar market is actually just as competitive as a 5 to 600,000 dollar market yeah. there's as many homes from 800 to a, to a million, as there are five to 600. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it, is, it is crazy. It's, it's been a lot. Chad, when's the last time you saw three homes over $2 million in our yeah, market? Geez. Yeah, jeez. But I also think this might also be contributing to our inventory levels. You'll notice we're growing up at the higher price point. We're not necessarily getting more in the lower price point. And we probably should have thrown out that 327 days on the market guy because it, yeah. would, it would show a little lo smaller number on the overall, right? Yeah. But this is a good stat to tell us why we're at 16 days on market. Mm -hmm. Because you have someone like this, this person here is obviously not competitively priced, mm -hmm. okay? And so when they do eventually close, it messes up all the stats. But this person doesn't care about the stats, so, you know, so it doesn't matter. I think the most bananas thing is something at two million is selling in five days. Right. Yeah. Well, this is this is current inventory. Oh, okay. How long the inventory we have right now has been on the market? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that would be bananas. That I was gonna say. But what's interesting is you've got sixty days average days on market for the three hundred to four hundred, and sixty. I mean. 60 days why is there something for why is there sitting at six days in that 300 there's something really overpriced or a bunch of stuff really overpriced in there you guys probably have seen those <laughs> you're like oh yeah i walked through is those. that just properties or is it is it land 
too. No, it's just, just single house. family. With a house. Yeah, yeah, with a house. And yes, the days on market, you know, you would almost kind of think that the days on market, 700 and above would be a much higher, but it's really not, not that bad. It's not that so, different than below 500. Yep. Amazing. Which means things are moving. So, so you said single family. Does that include like townhouses? And yeah, stuff? single okay. family townhouses. Yeah. Uh, manufactured with manufactured land. with land. So on permanent okay. foundations and cabins. cabins. Okay. Yep. Okay, let's move on to what our pendings are. So in this area, so currently there's 470 pendings. Again, we sometimes look at the amount of homes on the market and we think there is nothing here. Well, guess what? When we have 470 pendings they are on the market they're just not on very long i mean they're going we are not seeing a downturn in a scary way of homes that are selling and overall on the market we just have to make sure our buyers are aware that if they're leaving for a week they're going to miss some opportunities and so it's just a very competitive market also should make this warm the seller's hearts if you if you're worried about selling and you're saying there's nothing to buy there's 470 on top of the current inventory. Warm your heart. Warm your hearts, sellers. <laughs> so something to kind of, this is kind of how we can predict what's happening. As far as uh, sales price, our average sales price is 360. Yeah. Well, guess where our pendings are? Our and, prices- And that's not disclosed yet. And that's, yeah, that's that, not disclosed. But, it's, but we know 102.5% yeah. is what we're currently getting. Which means this might really be like 385. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so prices are not softening. Even though we still are selling about the same, it just means we have more demand than we do inventory, even though it's similar in, in the amount of units selling. Does that make sense? It's kind of confusing, but it's, it's, uh, it's telling an average days on market 16, they're going fast. As far as uh, Idle Falls, um, current homes on the market, 85. Again, we're seeing an increase there as well, which that's a great number, 85. I remember a year and a half ago, we were like, we might see the time when we're under 100 in Idle Falls. And I remember thinking, oh, I hope we never see that. Well, we got down to like, what, 50? Yeah. 30, 30 maybe 30 yeah. 30 there was that one time it was 30 something mm -hmm. yeah so anyway absorption Lucky rates thing we got a couple of two millions come on so yeah <laughs> that helped us yeah, so, so they're available if you totally. want one. um absorption rates about three weeks so we're seeing some increase there as well so that's good um how does the inventory look in idaho falls area bonneville county so basically again not too much different that 200 to 400 is where the majority is. And uh, we're kind of seeing a million and under, it's kind of softening. So a lot of those other properties that are over a million are, are outside of, uh, about half of those are outside of Bonneville County because there are 18 on the other slide and here we have 10. So anyway, it's crazy. I mean, days on market, it's all, it basically what this says is, it's pretty similar with between Jefferson County and Bingham County, the amount of numbers and days on market and all that. Okay, so Idle Falls, 293 pendings. That's also, I mean, a pretty good number for Idle Falls for Bonneville County. Average price, a little bit lower, 377. Um, average days on market's tighter though. We're at 11. So some of the rural properties, we're seeing them draw some pretty solid numbers. I think numbers. it's those higher prices, that average price. I think it'll you get longer days on market with those higher prices. Yep. When you're, and I think it has to do with getting land. I mean, yeah. You get a, a house and it has five acres out in the country, you have a higher price point. Yep, that's right. So those are our stats. Um, we hope it continues to move in the same direction. Uh, and the only way it does that is by more listings and more listings and more listings. So anyway, that being said, we want to turn some time over to... Uh, PRMI and Hunter, tell us a little bit, give us an update on uh, how the market is for you guys yeah. and what you're seeing. Thanks, Chad. I mean, it's it's insane for us too, right? I mean, you're seeing these prices and a lot of people are a little concerned about our prices going up, especially first-time home buyers. You look at that chart and I think it was around, what was the average, two, 250 or something like that. I mean, first-time home buyers are looking at that and they're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? How am I going to get into a home? And, and 
we have a lot of different programs and things that we're, you know, trying to help people into. And, you know, when you take these numbers and you say, well, typically you need three to three and a half percent. Um, but there's programs Idaho housing offers where you can come in with a half percent. So, you know, your down payment is literally 1500 to $1,700. And, and we're helping a lot of people with that right now, just because of the, the increase in prices. Um, and how are the rates? Yeah, rates are good. Isn't that the question? We get asked, how is the market? <laughs> you get to get asked. You know, it really how depends on so many factors. I mean, you see these awesome interest rates posted. And typically, that's like the ideal scenario. So that's, you know, credit score above 740. That's 20% down. Um, and, and then you could probably start see, getting closer to those rates that you're seeing advertised. But, you know, even, even people who come in with 3%, I mean, they're still sub 3, you know, right at 3%. So still really great for a lot of people. Which makes it affordable. So hopefully... You- yeah, it, it does. It takes 10 years and the rates stay low, right? Exactly. Yeah. Monthly <laughs> payments are staying extremely affordable, even given the, the higher prices. So it's keeping a lot of people engaged in the market and, and almost justifying these higher prices. So are you finding more people can qualify when they think maybe they can't right now? For sure. Yeah. People who, you know, definitely people who, you know, are married and maybe both are working jobs and making, you know, 13 to $15 an hour. You put those two together and you're making $30 an hour. And that's something that is, is really, you know, sustainable for a lot of people, especially even at the $300,000 price point. So that's kind of my job and our job is to look at that income and say, you know, you're actually qualified for more than you think. And then people are like, well, what about the down payment? And that's where we can really get into assistance and, and helping people. And it's, it's just been amazing helping people get into homes who, you know, think they can't afford it and just some awesome, awesome uh, success stories that we've had recently. So. Well, and, and to give a plug to PRMI and, and Hunter um, and Marcy as well, um, we had a couple this, uh, did they close a week ago? They, uh, yeah. yeah, about a week and, ago. Um, yeah. They were in a situation where they needed to move quickly. They were in a very tight p- price point, like just under 230 and uh, because they were looking to adopt a child. And in order for them to do this, they had to be in their own home. And so through a lot of creativity um, on the two, of, the two of them together, Marcy and Hunter, uh, we actually closed on a home for them last week. And they got down payment assistance. They got all sorts of other programs that they were able, able to leverage. And these folks got into a brand new home for under $1,000 out of pocket. That's wow. awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I think, I think we see, I know I've been seeing this, is with the downturn 10 years ago, some people had some credit issues. And to d- dive into that again is a little bit painful. And so they think that they can't. But, I mean, we're finding those people that, you know, just had that downturn, their credit's usually stellar. I mean, they're really, I mean, they're, they're, they can do a lot more than they realize. They just have to reach out and try to, you know, see where they are. Exactly. And it's probably going to yeah. be more optimistic than they think. Yeah. And buy now, because if they wait another year, it might be $400,000. <laughs> That's crazy. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Thanks, Hunter. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah. So if I make one more plug again about why this is like the perfect time to buy and sell, is if we're taught, we always talk about this, you know, sell high, buy low market. And when we talk about selling high, it's because we are getting the prices that you want. If you take and roll that equity and you move that money into your next house and your rates are at 3%, yeah. now is the time to get into your long-term home. If you're not in your forever home, man, it is time to look at doing that and move. And if you haven't ever bought a home and you think, well, I'm going to rent one more year, at these interest rates and this opportunity, you can save, if, if it goes up another 30% next year and you buy a $200,000 home, how much money is that in savings? Anybody know? 30% of 200,000. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. What is it? 60. $60,000 goes in the bank yeah. as a result of owning a home that you would have paid the same or maybe even less than the rent you're paying. And you put $60,000 in the bank. That is just, if you can fathom that. Pretty high that, cash on cash return. It's amazing. Yeah, it there is just no reason why you wouldn't make an attempt. If, you're, if you can borrow the money for down payment for parents, you can do, this is the time to buy. It is. So. I had someone send me a text yesterday saying how um, grateful they are for their home equity they got over the last year because they were able to do some things with their home equity that they didn't think they could do before, and it's a little bit of life changing. So. It is.
makes a huge difference. So speaking of local, just kidding. Was that a terrible segue? <laughs> speaking of local, not even close. So we don't just mention the nosy neighbors. I hope you all are following the nosy neighbors. And if you're not, please check us out on Facebook or any of our social media channels. So for you guys, I really love the fact that we have this insight into our local community as people are especially moving here, knowing what, what kind of cool places that we've got um, and that are owned locally and, and uh, are building these neat businesses. So we have visited First Street Swap Meet. So if you don't know, every Friday and Saturday right on First Street in front of the Planet Doom, they have a swap meet and all of those proceeds go toward the D.A.R.E. program. I didn't know that. D.A.R.E. is the one that hosts that. So really, really cool. Calacas Tacos um, and Miches, if you haven't been there, I mean, I don't think, I talk about it pretty much to everybody Delicious. that I know. So yeah. good. Uh, we visited the Edge Climbing Gym, which Chad scaled the wall like a boss. I didn't know a lot of things about what they do and really, even for beginners. And when the camera went off, so did you. Well, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Let's not say scaled. Let's say I went up two rungs and yeah. got scared and got down. She was a staircase <laughs> yeah. in the back. But very yeah. cool. Um, I didn't realize when you buy a pass, it's for the whole day. You can go and come back and go and come back all day. Very cool. Um, family nights down at the North Bingham County um, Historical Park. So if you guys don't know, you know the fairgrounds down outside of Shelley. Back behind there, they're, they've set up this whole historical, you know, tie rope and eat corn dogs or I don't know, whatever it is. It's very cool. And they do family nights each week. Um, Eagle Rock Dance Studio, they've got a, they've got a whole new slew of classes and, and uh, summer preschool. camps. What was that? Preschool. A preschool and mm -hmm. an art space preschool, which I thought was very cool. Um, Idaho Women's Business Center. You guys, if you don't know this and anybody that's out there, we have a really cool local resource that if you want to start a business, this Idaho Women's Business um, um, Idaho Women's Business Center is will help you. We'll help you write a business plan. We'll help you find funding. We'll help you support you, get a new mentor. It is really cool and it doesn't cost anything. So really amazing. And then Sunnyside Gardens, we just went out and talked to them about getting stuff planted and uh, getting your garden and your yard in order, which was really super fun. So very cool. Um, and that was all in May. So you can find that all on social media. We've got Jefferson Hills Golf Course, uh, Ray's Southern Barbecue. That's this week. Uh, Ray's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, Scatter Sunshine Flowers Farm. So it's a flower farm. Flowers Farm, flower farm. Let's go. Anyway, there's more to come. So we love it. We love the local people. We hope everyone will visit those nosy neighbors. It's fantastic. Sure. Perfect. All right. Well, that's the stack, Jack. Uh, keep a tune in next month for another yeah. round of another what is it as the real estate turns. That's, that's how I feel about it is. what it is. Every month is a whole new story. It is. It is. Now, a lot Thanks, of these everyone. young people don't understand as the real estate turns. Yep. If you want to be in the know on the value of your home, then click on the link or give us a call. You may feel like prices are high, but there has never been a time, a better time to sell your home and buy a home. Call us and we'll explain why. Our team has outpaced the market in dollars per home sold and time on the market. If you want to see how your home would sell and how much it would sell for, give us a call. If you love the idea of having someone to contact at any time, that's the benefit of a team. Give us a call, let us talk about your process and how you can have a better experience, a more satisfying experience in real estate with Murdoch Van Rank Company.